thank you. Um, hi again, everyone. Long time no see. Um, so I'm, I'm thrilled to be here with, uh, with Eamon, who I've known for many years and who is uh, the creator of Avalanche, one of the most widely used chains and uh, one of the fastest growing ones for DeFi and other applications. Um, I also wanted to congratulate Eamon on the recent two-year anniversary of Avalanche, which is an important uh, kind of milestone. And uh, it's obviously developed a lot in, in the last two years. Um, I've heard a lot of great things uh, about Avalanche from developers and users and a whole bunch of different folks. Um, I think one of the most interesting technical developments is subnets. And then there's a few others. Mm -hmm. Even I'm kind of going to leave it to you to explain subnets to us and, and give us a sense of how those are developing and any other big innovations in, uh, in the Avalanche ecosystem. Sure, gladly. So uh, it's been about two years since Avalanche has come online, since our big mainnet event. And in that time, I think we managed to prove to the world that we have a genuinely new step up in terms of consensus protocols. We have by far the fastest chain when it comes to, to time to finality. And we have one of the, uh, the most compelling architectures for pe people to build upon. That's an architecture based not only on a fast L1, but also the ability for people to create their application-specific blockchains. We call those things subnets. So if you have a demanding application and uh, you have a token that you would like to use for staking, for fees, for rewards, etc., then you can actually spin up your own blockchain where that thing executes according to your own virtual machine. You can actually introduce new virtual machines into the world. And, uh, and then you can do whatever you like in that universe. It's entirely yours. It, your fees are isolated from other activity on chain. So uh, at the same time, unlike an L2 vision, where L2s are very diverse and different from each other, in this universe, there is actually unity of, uh, of assets, a unity of architecture. So these subnets are all under one common umbrella, and it's easy to get in from the main chain to the subnets, and vice versa. The APIs are unified. So that's the uh, subnet architecture, and I'm thrilled about the opportunities this has presented. For example, when we had congestion on our main chain, we managed to, uh, to uh, essentially split out the, uh, the incredibly successful games, uh, which were creating a lot of load and driving DeFi prices up, to their own subnets. And we've proven to the world that this is the architecture that truly scales. We don't need fancy new inventions. We have something that works, and it's been proven to work for multiple use cases. I think we're up to some number of subnets now with many dozens in preparation on testnet. So, uh, so I'm really thrilled about where we are with the subnet, uh, subnet vision, and I'm looking forward to more people who might want to launch their own blockchains on top of, uh, you know, underneath this architecture. Yeah, that's, that's definitely very interesting. So, so basically, you're seeing more and more essentially app chains coming online and avalanche, and you feel that that's the scalability approach, that's the future of our entire industry, is that every app will essentially have its own chain. Is, every, is demanding, that, is that right? every demanding app should have, should at some point, will, or rather, there is a typical, uh, typical sort of progress for apps. They, they, if they become successful, they end up putting a lot of load on the underlying system. Or if they share a system with other successful apps, they end up facing high fees. The way to isolate yourself from those is to create your own blockchain, and that's exactly what we provide with subnets. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah, I think it makes sense as a scalability approach also. I think at the end of the day, these uh, applications will have so much load, whether it's gaming or DeFi or any number of other categories, that you're just going to see hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of app chains um, coming into existence to properly power the scalability. And those, you know, those app chains uh, definitely need a scalable way to interact with each other, and they need a scalable way to come into existence. Absolutely. So the, the whole app chain thesis definitely, definitely adds up. Um, I, I wanted to also get your feedback and kind of maybe partly switch topics to how you see oracles and the role that you feel oracles play in making you know, these app chains successful and making applications successful on, on Avalanche generally. Yeah, that's a great question. It's one that we often come back to every time I chat with you. And uh, let me reiterate what I told you when I first met you. And uh, uh, as soon as I spoke to Sergey, I forget how many years ago it was, as soon as I spoke to him at a tiny little research conference, and it was way before Chainlink, I think it was a gleam in your eye at that point, I realized, hey, this is going to be a huge, huge area. 
the interface between blockchains and the real world, which is bridged by oracles, is going to be one of the critical uh, stumbling blocks if not done well, a, a critical vulnerability if not done well, and a huge enabler if done well. And so uh, our, our cooperation and partnership with Chainlink has been an immense boost to us in terms of getting Avalanche DeFi off the ground. About two years ago, we, we barely, exactly two years ago, I think we were maybe a week old or so. So, uh, so we were just a nascent tiny chain. Now, Avalanche DeFi is one of the biggest DeFi's at some point. I think we were the number three in terms of TVL or number, number three in terms of TVL on chain. And, um, and so uh, and right now also we have a very, very healthy economy, a very healthy DeFi uh, ecosystem entirely enabled by oracles and in no small part due to Chainlink. Great, makes, makes sense, thank you. Um, you know, we recently also jointly announced that Avalanche is participating in the SCALE program, which seeks to get even more uh, Oracle networks and various service onto the Avalanche system in a scalable, cost-efficient way. Um, you know, I think it's a great program because it gets even more great services into the Avalanche ecosystem so people can build even more advanced applications, but, but also wanted to hear your, your views on the SCALE uh, partnership and program and, and how you feel it can benefit Avalanche. Uh, sure, I'm thrilled about the scale partnership that we are, uh, we, we've uh, announced and are about to launch. And uh, uh, the, the core idea behind scale is to increase the number and quality of oracles available to our applications. So this is a game of enabling as many other people to do whatever they like and to create as much value as they can. So for a platform provider like, like me, um, it's very, very straightforward. Allow other people to get to wherever they want to go. That's what, what we're in the business of. Now, one of the key things for that is having high-quality oracles and having enough choice among them to be able to allow people to make informed uh, you know, decisions and to match their security needs. Uh, to that end, as I mentioned, our cooperation with, uh, with Chainlink has been incredibly successful. Scale now takes it up to the next level uh, by increasing both quantity and quality. I'm ex especially excited about uh, the new diverse uh, oracles that we're about to, uh, to bring online, like the VRF ones, et cetera, uh, that uh, bring new cryptographic abilities and, and different sources of, of information onto the chains. Um, one thing I should mention, unlike many other chains that try to compete with the dollar, unlike many other chains that try to build a computer in the sky, we are different at Avalanche. We are here to digitize all of the world's assets. And to digitize the world's assets, there needs to be a tight coupling between what happens on chain and the real world. So our reliance, our connection to oracles has always been of utmost importance to us, and scale, again, is, the, is a key enabler for that. Some of the things we announced, uh, like the uh, KKR fund uh, coming on to and issuing one of it, KKR, for those who don't know, has about, it's a big asset manager with about $500 billion in assets. It's one of the biggest Trad5 players. And uh, they just uh, decided to digitize a fund of theirs on a, on a blockchain, and they chose the Avalanche blockchain, in no small part due to the rich and, and good uh, DeFi ecosystem that we have built. We would like to bring more and more of these kinds of players into the space to break out of the crypto bubble and to expand into the world at large. So to that end, I think this partnership is going to play a crucial role. Great, makes sense. Yes, it's absolutely our goal to provide even more great Oracle networks and services to, to great development environments. Um, Avalanche, I think, can, can definitely continue to grow and have great uh, developers build amazing applications, and I think that will attract uh, additional um, you know, large players like KKR, like others, um, as long as there's a robust environment to build good applications with good services and, and all that kind of composability eventually adds up to a, a very good development environment, which at the end of the day is what Scale offers. It's the ability to create a great ecosystem and development environment for people to, to build uh, the, next, um, the, the next stage of, of, of their ecosystem's development. So really appreciate you working with us on that and excited to, to help bring Avalanche to new heights with the help of um, even more oracles and oracle networks. Um, you know, I, in the time that we have left, um, I'd be thrilled to hear your views on you know, where the industry is going, what do you think the next stages are for the industry, for DeFi, and for, 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 for other categories of, um, of the blockchain industry? Sure. Um, I think I mentioned a couple of years ago that it was going to be a, a war of chains in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of chains that scale. 
And that, that has played itself out mostly by now. So now you have the emergence of really fast chains like Avalanche, and then you have different takes on this. Uh, you have chains that actually trade off latency to try to get slightly more capacity. So that's going to be an interesting thing as it plays out after the Ethereum merge. Uh, we'll see how that, uh, that pans out. But, um, but I called that one, and, and I would like some credit for having called it. I then called uh, the bridge wars. I said about a year and a half ago that the, that the coming year was going to be a, one of the war of bridges. Um, that turned into a war of hackers on bridges, and, uh, and a lot of bridges got hacked. So, uh, so that was that, and that's also played itself out. The number one bridge today is one that we built based on the secure, uh, secure enclave technology that we built. So what's next for, for the world at large, for, for blockchains at large? A couple of things. I think we're beginning to see TradFi actually take an interest for real. And that's really, really exciting to me. We're beginning to see real new assets come onto chains, and uh, that's going to, there were some bottlenecks, but with the subnet architecture, we can address their, their compliance needs, and uh, we can allow people to, to bring in uh, the 700 trillion of value that's off-chain onto, onto blockchains. Um, another thing that I'm super excited about for those of you in the audience that might be interested in cool tech, um, this is something that we just uh, unveiled. It's called a fully encrypted exchange, FEX, to complement CEXs, centralized exchanges, and decentralized exchanges. A, a fully encrypted exchange is kind of like a DEX, but not really like a DEX, um, in that it provides privacy. And so uh, orders need not be public as they are with a DEX. And so you can actually build things where uh, the trades themselves uh, can take place in private, uh, information is not leaked, even a, an insider working at a, an, an FEX, a FEX, uh, is unable to leak information. I think this is a new era because even on Wall Street, you know, Wall Street ends up criticizing us quite a lot, but when you look at what they do, it's entirely trust-based. And the only way that trust is not misplaced is because there are inspectors who come in post facto and try to unveil crime. And occasionally they find something and often they miss it. But with an with a, with a, with a, with a fax, with a, with a fully encrypted exchange, compliance is built into the platform so that that inspection is not necessary. Think of it as a secure smart contract operating with privacy. That's what it offers. I'm really, really excited about that technology. So we're going to see innovation of this kind take place. And I think, I think as of this moment, I would say the last six months or so, we are ahead in terms of technology compared to Wall Street. And that's a fantastic place to be at, uh, even in a bear market. I think that, that is one big technical achievement we've done as a space. And uh, it's going to bear a lot of fruit because we will build uh, layered solutions on top of this that are so much, uh, that are so far superior that it, it's, they're going to have their own draw. Makes sense. Yeah, that does sound exciting. Um, I think I'm also seeing uh, a lot of trade fi coming into the industry and starting to, to take it very seriously. Um, I think they're seeing their institutional clients uh, demand tokenization access and eventually uh, also express an interest in DeFi. Um, I think this is the thing that we're, we're both seeing from, from different points of view. Um, I think that'll require a good uh, blockchain layer, and I think it'll require a good connectivity layer to make sure that uh, you know, those systems can function properly. And um, you know, I think this uh, encrypted side of the exchange uh, question is very interesting as well. And uh, in addition to the trade fi, I think a lot of trade fi will depend on both the ability to give them privacy and the ability to give them um, identity so that they can be compliant. So um, if we can provide the oracles that provide identity and there can be different mechanisms to provide privacy to their activities, then they can kind of check all their boxes and bring hundreds of trillions of dollars into the blockchain ecosystem, which, uh, which is something that they um, are already starting to do basically because their clients are saying to them that this is what they want. And at the end of the day, these people do what their clients want. They don't really do anything else. They just listen to their clients, they service their clients, they keep their clients, and they're all very happy. So I, I think uh, I completely agree with you. This is all going in, in that direction. Um, and as long as we can provide identity and privacy through um, on-chain encryption or through Oracle-related encryption, we can, we can really um, welcome this large influx of value into the blockchain industry and into DeFi. So it's, it's, it's been great chatting with you, Eamon. You know, we have, uh, we have a lot of other stuff to cover in the conference, but it's been a real pleasure to have you here. It's always a pleasure to chat with you, and I, I know the immense amount of contributions you made to our space, which I always appreciate. 
it's, uh, it's always a pleasure to see you, and I, I want to thank you for being part of the conference. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, and thanks, thanks to the Chamber community.